From the Weather NorCal Command Center, this is your morning update. Cascade Paint and Supply is Reading's oldest family-owned paint store established in 1953. We are the largest Dunn Edwards dealer in the nation and most of our products are made in the U.S. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff are ready to answer your questions and help you today. Well, so glad you could join us here in Weather NorCal. It is your Wednesday morning. And you know what? We've got that rain returning. We've been talking about it this uh, week so far. Also the chance with thunderstorms. And with that cold front passing through, you're talking about some gusty winds making their way back into the forecast as well. And not to mention some snow in the higher elevations. Now we're looking at off and on showers through the weekend, most likely at least through the the beginning of the weekend. By the second half of the weekend, chances do begin to diminish and even getting warmer by next week. Snow levels between four and 5,000 feet, really to kind of begin with. At points, they could drop down to as low as 3,000, 3,500 feet, somewhere in that uh, range, but I don't expect them to get much lower than that. Then you can see the models are still trending towards a drier Easter Sunday, but I gotta be honest with you, there's just that little inkling of a little bit of rain there, possibly on Sunday, which we'll talk about in more detail here in a second. All right, let's take a look at your neighborhood forecast here for today to kind of, if you're kind of in a bit of hurry, just want to know what to expect today. Now, don't let that fool you. Don't look at this and go, oh my gosh, it's going to be just doomsday with all the lightning strikes and the heavy rain. Well, if you get caught under a thunderstorm, yes, you're talking heavy rainfall, you're talking potential hail, you're talking about lightning strikes. So it may look like that over where you are. There's also a very good chance that you'll be looking at some sunshine peeking through those clouds and maybe some scattered showers. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at this here, right? Of course, you can see for Siskiyou, Modoc County, most likely just in the form of showers off and on throughout the day today, and not to mention off into the eastern mountains as well. Uh, let's go and take a look at that severe outlook. So this is the best chance for thunderstorms in the areas in green right here. I think as you head into Siskiyou, Modoc, Lassen counties, you're pretty much looking at those showers here, and especially as we kind of get into the afternoon hours. But yeah, the valley, some of the mountains, the coast, all seen that potential for some lightning strikes. And tomorrow, you can see it's mainly just for the coast and mainly for the valley as well. So we've still got that chance even going into tomorrow. So let's walk you through the timing of the rain here for today. The cold front is still well off to our west this morning, by the way, but we've got some of these prefrontal showers that'll be moving in here this morning. Then as we get into about noon hour, we're seeing some of the showers. Now we're getting a bit of shadowing in the valley. So we're really, even for the first half of the day, we're just not gonna see much rain. It's gonna be one of those situations where if you're in the valley you're going, where's this rain Mike was talking about? Well, it's off to our west. They're seeing that rainfall on the coast. They're not gonna be questioning the rain that I've been forecasting, right? But you do have that cold front here. So it's gonna be the winds associated with that as well. Now we're also seeing snow, but still fairly high, four to 5,000 feet. But check those road conditions if you're heading out today because Mother Nature always has a way of surprising us, doesn't she, right? So let's take you into the afternoon hours. Here's three o'clock in the afternoon. Now here's the thing, my son has a track meet today. And I kept telling him the last few days, they do realize there's rain in the forecast, right? So we'll see if you know that gets canceled or not because we go into 3 p.m. Again, look at Red Bluff, look at Corning, Chico, and Willows. Not much in the way of rain, if anything, at this point, right? Maybe some, some stray showers. But the north end of the, the valley, yes, now we're starting to see some of that rain move in. The cold front is just beginning to move through. The wind's beginning to pick up as well. And by the way, maybe even some isolated lightning strikes, but notice where the heaviest rainfall is just behind that cold front in advance of it. But again, some shadowing there. Now I'm gonna take you into the afternoon closer to the evening hour, 6 p.m. All right, so now Red Bluff, Corning, Chico, Willis, all seeing that and potential for some thunderstorms around the Reading area. Then of course, around where the cold front is, you've got that snow, four to 5,000 feet, showers, maybe some thunderstorms, but look at behind it. By 6 p.m., it's dry for the coast. It's dry for most of Trinity County and western Siskiyou County as well. So we're seeing that main cold front. That's where the heaviest strong, that's where the strongest winds are going to be, some of the heaviest rainfall, and the potential for thunderstorms as well. Because then that moves out of the area by tonight. Still some snow behind it, obviously, and snow levels dropping now between three and four thousand feet because the cold front, you have the, the colder air behind it. So the snow levels tend to drop a bit behind it. But look at this, we're seeing some clearing for the valley tonight, but the next disturbance coming in on Wednesday. 
Now, really what's happening is this. We've got cold and unstable air in place on Thursday. So we'll start off fairly dry, some snow flurries for some of the higher elevations. This could create some problems with chain requirements between three and 4,000 feet. But see the showers, maybe even some thunderstorms developing at this point. Now, as we go through the day, we're gonna get what we call convective heating. The heat kind of, it heats the surface that, that then rises in the upper levels of the atmosphere and things begin to destabilize. Showers and possible thunderstorms as we go through the afternoon. You can see the valley scene that, you see kind of the, the isolated in nature. That's essentially what we're looking at here for your Thursday. And then we go into Thursday afternoon, still a chance for showers and thunderstorms in the forecast. Uh, and then even as we go into Thursday night, we're still seeing some of the leftover showers. We're still seeing snow in the mountains. That's still gonna create chain requirements and travel delays, right? And then look what happens. The main area of pressure responsible for a lot of this instability is now moving to the south and we're getting more of that flow coming in from the south and west. So by Friday, 10 a.m., we're still seeing some of those showers out there, but the bulk of the rain down to our south that will be kind of working its way northward through the day on Friday, continuing to give us a chance for some rain. So rainfall totals today, I think Redding could pick up about a quarter to a half an inch, just depending on where you are in town. But notice again, the shadowing that we do have in the central part of the valley, not as much rain. The coast, of course, you're gonna see more rainfall, anywhere from a half an inch to probably even over an inch. And of course, much less rain for the day today because it's gonna take longer for that rain to get to parts of eastern, uh, the eastern portions of the viewing area. But then as we go into Thursday, Friday, yes, we've got more rain coming in, possibly upwards of an inch for Redding, uh, and of course, less than that for the rain shadowed areas, and probably over an inch for the coast. Snow, well, you know, here's the thing. You look at this and you look at these numbers, you go, that's not a lot of snow because it isn't for the lower mountain communities, right? But as you go above five, 6,000 feet, now you're talking about some heavy snow. So that's why there's advisories and warnings for some of the higher elevations, especially east of the valley. Travel east of I-5 is definitely gonna be a, a slow going, especially over those higher mountain passes, four or 5,000 feet, because that's where most of the snow is going to be. Now, looking at the forecast road conditions here for today, noon, it's mainly in the form of rain. So you don't have to worry about chain requirements, just, again, slowing it down a bit for those um, wet roads. And then as we go into this afternoon and evening, what we're gonna start to see happen is we're starting to see more snow. So again, more issues on east of I-5, but look at I-5 right here, still in the form of rain, still in the form of rain for Highway 89. Again, it's mainly tonight and into tomorrow morning that we'll see the better potential for some snow, especially in Highway 89. Of course, we start to lower those snow levels a bit here east of I-5, but I think it's mainly not gonna be a concern here for Highway 299. Buckhorn Summit tonight, early tomorrow, Tomorrow morning, yeah, maybe some snow on Buckhorn Summit on Highway 299. Otherwise, you know, for the most part, it's not going to be too much of a problem here on Highway 299 between Redding and uh, Arcata. But there you can see, of course, the gusty winds in association with that cold front. Gusty winds, if you're traveling north on I-5, Central Siskiyou County, be aware of the fact that it'll be very windy up there, especially a high-profile vehicles could be a problem. Uh, then we go into the noon today, into the afternoon. Now, it's not really showing much in the way of wind for Redding, but I do expect for the valley later this afternoon to see gusts upwards of around 30 and close to 40 miles per hour, and not to mention gusty winds for the eastern mountains. Now, as we go into Thursday, winds overall not as strong, but we are expected to see some gusty winds even through the day on Thursday. And then you'll notice on Friday, the winds should be a bit calmer, but still breezy. I mean, you're still talking 10 to 15 miles per hour in many locations. All right, so here's your Trinity County neighborhood forecast. Those temperatures, upper 40s to around 50. There's that chance for thunderstorms, and again, don't look at that and go doomsday, right? Because that's what it looks like and that's what it always feels like, right? When you're looking at that, but that's not the case. Again, this is what it may look like in some areas, but then other areas may, as I mentioned, we'll see some peaks of the sunshine here as well. So I've got the showers in there, but otherwise, yes, we could see some of those thunderstorms over the next few days as well. Siskiyou County neighborhood forecast, 47 Etna, 49 degrees for Fort Jones, and Weed about 46 degrees off to the north and east into Modoc County. There you can see 48 for Tule Lake, 50 in Canby, Eagleville about 52, and 50 out in Fort Bidwell. And for the Eastern Mountains neighborhood forecast, how about mainly upper 40s, low 50s? Doyle a little bit warmer at about 56, 51 for Paradise, and 49 degrees for Shingletown. That's a 3,500 feet Shingletown, by the way, just kind of a reminder 
that yes, there are a lot of different elevations in Shingletown and that can have an impact uh, on those temperatures and of course not even, not to mention that rain. Here's your Valley neighborhood forecast to the south, about 60 degrees for Willows, 57 degrees for Durham and Chico and 57 for Los Molinos. We take you up north with 53 for Lakehead, 53 for the city of Shasta Lake and 55 degrees in Cottonwood, 56 in Red Bluff. Here is your seven day outlook for Redding. Again, doomsday is what it looks like, but it won't be. We've got showers and thunderstorms in the forecast. By the way, when we, got, when we see those thunderstorms develop, that could also lead to the potential for some hail and accumulating hail both today and tomorrow. Please be aware of that. If you get caught up in a storm that has that slow down, watch traffic around you and be careful because it can get very dangerous very quickly here. And then often on showers for Friday, Saturday, and again, I'm keeping the chance for showers in the forecast. Stick around for the deeper dive forecast because we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail and why there still is that slight chance in there. And then going into Monday, Tuesday, yeah, looking pretty nice. Temperatures back in the mid to upper 70s and those sunny skies. All right, let's take a look at that deeper dive forecast. But before we get to that, I want to remind you, if you're new to Weather NorCal, first of all, Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Tell your friends, tell all your family that Weather NorCal is here and it's a free service for everybody on the internet, on Roku, on Amazon Fire Stick, on your iPhone, on your Android, on your computer, on your laptop, just not from your TV antenna, not on cable. Although that's something I may be working on here, possibly getting it on the cable TV station. So, Stay tuned for that. We'll see. All right, but here is the free Weather NorCal app. Everything I have to offer, not just weather. I really want to be involved in the community. I've got community events that I attend. And of course, not to mention, we've got uh, Ag Reports. We've got uh, Pet of the Week. Uh, we've got Turtle Bay Wonderful World of Animals with Sharon Clay. We take a look at some of the animals. So a lot of other interesting program that we have, programs that we have in here as well. And we're also talking about those neighborhood forecasts. So a lot to talk about with that, but let's get right to your forecast. Here's the area of low pressure that is going to be responsible for the wet weather today. We've got that rotation around that low. You can see the colder air getting wrapped up within that area of low pressure. That's the speckled clouds that we're seeing here. Here's the cold front right here. That's that's what's going to bring us the gusty winds, the potential for thunderstorms, and not to mention brief periods of heavy rainfall, otherwise scattered showers and some showers in advance of it as well. We take you way off to the west. This is what's going to be impacting us today and tomorrow. This is still in the developing phases and will eventually become an area of low pressure on its own and develop more showers for us and maybe even some thunderstorms on Friday. But that is going to get caught up in the flow of this area of low pressure right here. Watch what happens. So here we go. This is the cold front moving through today. We saw the timing of the rain coming in today and even tomorrow. So we're not going to really focus a whole lot on that. But watch this. This is what's coming in on Friday that's going to rotate around that area of low pressure. So the, the southwest flow is going to bring and transport that moisture over us, giving us more showers on Friday. Chances for thunderstorms are slimmer on Friday, by the way. Then we go into Saturday. This shifts to the south. But we're still around that upper level flow, but we're getting on the north side of this area of low pressure. So it's this area right here that you have the best chance for rain. On the back side of it, yes, there are chances, but not as much. Watch what happens on Easter Sunday. Not only does it shift more to the south, but it weakens. So we're seeing less of that flow coming around that area of low pressure. However, this all being said, there's still a lot of leftover moisture in place. So here's how it looks for me right now. Here's what I'm thinking. I think Sunday morning, for the most part, should be dry. There may be some clouds out there, but for any sunrise services, uh, for Easter egg hunts on Sunday, I think it should be dry. But if we get enough clearing through the day, there may be just enough what we call convection that there could be an isolated shower developing Sunday afternoon. But after that, all bets are off for rain, at least at this point. Monday, Tuesday of next week, we've got high pressure building in and warmer temperatures. And you saw that on the seven day forecast for Reading, at least, right? Temperatures back in the mid to even upper 70s. So how much rain potentially when we're looking out this far, do not take this to be exact, but it gives you a general idea. I think we could see upwards of an inch on average for the valley, upwards of one to even over two inches of rain for the coast. 
and uh, maybe a little over an inch for places, parts of Siskiyou County, but to the north, not as much, and not as much off to the north and east. Again, pretty typical footprint that we see, but also the precipitation outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, it's backing off more and more on the potential for rain, getting us closer to that near normal and below normal and making its way into the northwestern portions of the state. And temperatures too, same situation. Temperatures are starting to climb. The cooler air is beginning to move out, and warmer air is beginning to replace it, and we're gonna see a bit of a warming trend as we get into the extended outlook here. Here's your marine forecast for today. Southwest winds at 15 to 25 knots. There is a gale warning until 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, but we should see conditions maybe improve a little bit here. But I want to show you the wave heights as we go into this afternoon around 10 feet, especially heading out to sea here, right? But look what happens as we take you into your Thursday. They're actually increasing. So we probably may see more of a gale warning here as we go into Thursday as well. All right, so let's take a look at that seven day outlook. There you can see that we do have the chance for showers and thunderstorms. Again, not doomsday. It's not gonna be steady rainfall all day and lightning all day, but that just kind of gives you an idea. See, this is one of the things that I really like to point out. Yes, we all have our apps. You say, why do I need to even watch you, Mike? when I've got an app here on my phone that tells me what the weather's gonna be like. Well, because I give you context to what you're looking at here. You look at this and you think, oh my goodness, right? But not everyone's gonna see lightning strikes. Not everyone's gonna see it, but you need to be prepared for the fact that it could happen, okay? And not to mention some of the small hail. And again, you look at this, you don't get the full story because we have to remember that hail and accumulating hail is something that we can see, especially this time of the year, and that's something you got to look at. Showers possibly on Friday, not to mention Saturday. Maybe, as I mentioned, we talked about that for Easter Sunday, the potential for maybe some afternoon showers. But for the most part, it's looking fairly dry uh, for your Sunday, your Easter Sunday. There, of course, you can see for the coast, inland and Weaverville, showers and thunderstorms are a possibility, but much warmer and drier weather as we take you into next week. And there is a look at your seven day outlook from Mount Shasta, Alturas and Susanville. Snow levels could drop to as low as 3000 feet at points, especially tonight and into tomorrow morning, but then back up to around 3,500 to 4,000 feet and eventually 4,500 feet, 4, 4, feet for those snow levels, that is, by Saturday.